Hey, welcome everybody to Traits and Reproduction Lesson 1.2, Introducing Spider Silk Research. I really like this, uh, this unit of study. Um, cool simulation, ton of information. We're going to learn a bunch of stuff, and uh, you're going to feel real smart, real smart by the end of this. Uh, Mr. Wig and I already feel pretty smart, thanks. Well, great, that's awesome. I'm stoked. Hey, um, wearing my Eevee Evolutions shirt. I have my. I bought one for my son too. You have matching shirts. It's adorable. Um, yes, yes, yes. Uh, so, starting off as always, we're going to jump into the warm up here, uh, and we have uh, an anticipation guide. Really, is what it is. Uh, so, we just took our uh, our pre unit assessment in one point one, um, and you told me all the things that you already know about uh, uh, inheritance traits and reproduction. Um, a bunch of questions that you had to apply your knowledge to. Well, um, we have some more, more questions or some more ideas, statements really. And you're going to tell me whether you agree with or disagree with them. And uh, you're also going to tell me why. So we have one, two, three, four, five statements. And uh, in the very end, it says in the space below, explain why you agree or disagree with the first statement. Each person in a family has the same traits. There are no differences in traits between parents and offspring or among siblings. Now, all these statements here, these are things that we're going to be talking about during this unit. We're going to be coming back to these. We're going to, by the end of this unit, you will have like such a clear understanding of how to answer each or respond to each one of these statements and whether you agree or disagree with each one of them and most importantly, why you disagree or agree with each one of them. So here they are, number one, each person in a family has the same traits. There are no differences in traits between parents and offspring or among siblings. Traits such as your hair or eye color are determined by the proteins made by cells in your body. There are two genes that decide each of your traits, and, these two, and those two genes are always exactly alike. An offspring cannot have a trait if neither of its parents have it. And lastly, all traits are determined by the experiences an organism has or the environment it lives in. For example, you will have the trait of being a strong swimmer if you swim a lot and live in or near the water. Well, I grew up with, with, a, with a pool in my backyard, and my parents ran a swim school, so of course, of course I have, I will have the trait of being a strong swimmer. That makes sense to me, right? Or does it? Or does it? Anyways, uh, so go through each one of those, uh, say whether you agree or disagree, and then uh, for the last one, explain why uh, you chose uh whether you agree or disagree for the first statement. All right, do that now, come back to me. All right, next, I love videos, I love videos. This video is really cool because um, I think all the videos we've watched so far have been fictional. But this one, in this video, we actually do get to see uh, a real scientist at work and see how they are applying what we're learning about in the lab and in real life. So uh, I really liked this video um, for that reason. Not that the other ones weren't good applications, but this one for sure, uh, you're gonna see some cool stuff. So uh, this video is attached to the lesson. It's also on my YouTube channel. Watch this and come back to me. Mr. Wigan, heck a rude. You didn't tell me there was gonna be spiders in there. I hate spiders. Hey, uh, Cool stuff, though. Um, what they're talking about, they're talking about using spider silk to make artificial tendons. What? What other applications are there for spider silk? A uh, lot of cool looking spiders, too. I mean, have you ever walked through a spider web and it, it almost feels like you're pushed back because the spider web is so strong? Or like walk through a spider web and you can't even, you, you, you know, it's on you and you, you keep trying to, you, uh, you, where, where is it? Get, where to go? Oh man, uh, or just trying to get rid of like spider webs in your house, whatever. Um, cool stuff, cool stuff. I'm glad somebody's uh, somebody's studying it. Hey, later on in a future video, we'll see actually how they extract the silk and how they actually test the silk too. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I had spiders in my room all the time, and I hated them. I remember sleeping in my bed and like I would be laying there almost asleep, almost asleep. And I would feel a spider drop from the ceiling onto my face and like crawl off and be like, ah. wake up, throw all the covers off the bed, try to find that thing. <sighs> and now I have one in my classroom uh, named after one of the spiders in 
the simulation that we're going to be looking at. So we are going to be looking at a group of spiders called Darwin's Bark Spider. Um, and we are going to be, uh, be we're, we're student researchers. I know, I know, I know. We're always like in a special role, uh, student researcher, intern, what have you. Well, we're researchers here and we have a letter from the lead scientist at Bay Medical Company two student researchers from Dr. Ada Satari, lead scientist at Bay Medical Company, subject, spider silk research. I, not me, but Dr. Satari, the lead spider silk research team, a group of genetic researchers. I, oh, I'm sorry, I lead. There we go. We are working on medical treatments that use silk from the Darwin's bark spider, a newly discovered spider species. These spiders produce very strong silk. We want to see if their silk can be used to make tendons and stitches for humans. For this to work, the silk must be both strong and flexible. A medium level of silk of flexibility is optimum. Remember that medium level of, of flexibility. Unfortunately, we've discovered that not all Darwin's bark spiders are the same. Some spiders, even those in the same family, make more flexible silk than others. Okay, interesting. As soon researchers, you will work to explain why traits such as silk flexibility can vary within a family of Darwin's bark spiders. Huh. Okay, I, I mean, did you ever even think about that? How different spiders might produce different types of silk? And not only that, but spiders within the same family might be producing different, uh, different types of silk. Interesting, interesting. And right here, we have a picture of the Darwin's bark spider family tree. One family tree of uh, two Darwin's bark spiders. We have Papa spider here with a low silk flexibility. Mama spider here with a medium silk flexibility. Okay, low silk flexibility, medium silk flexibility. What about, what about the kiddos, the baby spiders? Well, this one has low silk flexibility. It's a male, okay. Hey, look, look, that, that, that matches. Okay, I guess that makes sense, right? Uh, 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 offspring B is a female with medium silk flex. Well, okay, that makes sense. Offspring C is a male, low. So, okay, that makes sense. I, w wait a minute. What about this female? High silk flexibility. What? What? I, uh, that's not. Neither one of them had high silk flex. I'm, conf I'm confuzzled here. What? What could be happening? Why? Where? Where did this high silk flexibility come from? Well, I, 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 I want to know. I have some theories. Um, let's, let's look at this. What is, is this what I want? I think, I think this is what I want right here. Oh, <gasps> claims, claims. I have some claims. Why do traits for silk flexibility vary within this family of Darwin spark spiders? How come the kids have different flexibilities from one another and one of them even totally different from the parents? <sighs> Claim number one. Here we go. The offspring have mutations that affect their traits. Yeah, easy answer, right? Well, their genes just changed, Mr. Wigand. Um, okay, maybe, perhaps, I don't know. How about, how about claim number two? The offspring's traits depend on which parent. Ah, the offspring received more traits from. Okay, which, that makes sense. Which parent the offspring received more traits from? Got it, got it. Well, what about this last one? Uh, the offspring received different combinations of traits from their parents. I, I don't really know what that one means. I, I think the mutation one is the easy answer, Mr. Wigan. I'm going to go for that one because because mutations, right? Uh, good, good, good. We're going to be going through these. We're going to look at evidence that is going to uh, help us to say uh, whether we uh, the evidence supports or rejects these certain claims. We're going to be going back and looking at that. Uh, let's go ahead and move on, though, to our next slide. Let me find it. I said slide. There are no more slides. Amplify uh, did not come out with them. So, um, hey, we don't need them, right? Uh, we're just going through the lesson piece by piece. And you know what? You can tell me whether you like this way better or not. Um, let's talk about the, the difference between traits and feature because we're going to be using these terms all throughout the rest of the unit. So we need to make sure that we got them straight. Uh, first of all, uh, a feature is a general category general category, whereas the trait is the specific uh, 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 slot in that category. Look at our slide right here. Example of a trait, body color, or feature, sorry, 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 body color. Body color is a feature. These spiders have different body colors. Okay, this spider right here on the left, its trait is yellow body color. 
is spider on the right, its trait is brown body color. So you can see how, okay, feature. They both have the feature body color, but the trait is the specific uh, of, of that feature. How that, how that feature is, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, not established, uh, 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 expressed. That's the word I was looking for, how that feature is expressed. So um, think, of, think of your own features. Uh, look, look, humans, right? Like humans have, uh, okay, color is easy. Hair color is, is a feature, right? You can have all sorts of different hair colors, right? All sorts of different traits for hair color. Uh, eye color, sure, eye color. Um, let's see, number of number of fingers. Um, uh, you could have five fingers, that would be one trait. Maybe you have six fingers, that's, that's another trait. Uh, so try to think of some more. What are some other features that humans have? Maybe humans, maybe not even humans, maybe another uh, organism. And what are some traits of that feature. Brainstorm some of those right now. Hey, we looked at these claims um, on this on this other page here, and we're trying to answer this question. This is our, our main question right here. Why do traits for silk flexibility vary within this family of Darwin's bark spiders? Why do the traits vary? So th again, think about it, think about it. Um, which of these claims seems to make the most sense to you? Again, this is where we're headed. We want to make sense of these claims. We want to decide which of these we really agree with by the end of this thing. So next thing we're going to do is we are going to, where am I? Where am I? Oh, I was over here. We're going to jump into the simulation. Uh, the first thing that I want you to do, and you can launch the simulation right here. You can also always go up. Huh, you can't go up there. It's It's not it's not there. There it is. That's the menu I want right there. You can always also uh, go up here and find the one with the spider on it. Where, oh, there it is. There's the spider traits and reproduction. You can always find it in this menu up here. Also in this menu, you can find the library. You can find your work. Um, but we're going to go to the simulation. And you're just going to play around with it. Ooh, look, here's here's the simulation right here. <gasps> oh, cool. Look, spiders, all sorts of spiders. Um, Look, Zora, Zora, this is the name of the spider in my, in my classroom. I named it Zora after, after this spider right here. Um, Zora will live on forever. Um, so play around with this. Click on things, move things around, click on all these things. What's, what's this? I don't know. Oh, random. Select. Um, but just take some time and explore the simulation. Do that. Next thing I want you to do is I want you to actually do some specific things in the simulation just so you know how to do them and where to find them. So uh, let's follow these instructions. It says working with your partner. You don't have to work with a partner, obviously, but you can. You can email somebody and say, hey, let's work together on, on Google Hangouts on Zoom. That'd be great. That'd be fantastic. I, I fully approve that. If you did not already have it open, launch the traits and simulation. Select random spiders mode in uh, the global navigation menu in the top left corner of your screen. Where's that? Where's, where do I find, ra oh, random spiders, there we go. Okay, load random spiders, yes, I did that. Okay, uh, uh, select a feature such as silk flexibility or size from the feature menu bar. Where do I find, oh, there, there we go. Oh, okay, silk flexibility, size, I'm gonna go ahead and do size, okay. Ooh, ooh, look at that, it, it, it did things. Um, okay, look, I see traits and I see letters and numbers, some sort of code, okay. So let's go back, okay, select feature. Examine each spider's traits for that particular feature. Then compare your spiders with your partners. Do the spiders have different traits for this feature? Well, you can examine your own spiders, right? Your own batch, you have six spiders there. Do they have different traits? Select a spider and press on the spider to view its cell, okay? Note your spider traits should not be the same as your partners. Um, let's find a spider, click on the spider. Oh, look. Here's one of the muscle cells of this spider, okay? And what is all this gobbledygook nonsense over here? I have no idea, um, but interesting. Okay, something called ribosomes, a nucleus. I think I've heard of that before. Something about proteins here. Okay, uh, what, what, what next? Compare the cell for your spider that you selected with your partners. What differences do you notice inside the two spider cells? So you can choose different features, different traits, uh, different traits of your spiders. And 
what are the differences that you notice? What are some of the specific differences that you notice? Do you notice any differences? Don't worry, we'll talk about these more. Um, but just try to make some observations right now about some of those differences that you notice. Um, hey, let's talk about this next vocabulary term, variation, any difference in traits between individual organisms. So we would say that there is a very, there's multiple variations here amongst these spiders. Uh, clearly there is a variation in their color. Uh, there's a variation in furriness. Um, doesn't look like there's a variation in the pattern here on their, uh, uh, is that their abdomen? Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, there, there are some, certainly some variations. And these are only the ones that we can see. There's going to be other variations as well that uh, might not be uh, visible at first. Moving on to the homework. Ooh, we are almost there. I know, it's a longer video. Um, review your original response to the statement from the anticipation guide. Remember this? This is from the warm-up. So go back to the warm-up. Each person in the family has the same traits. There are no differences in traits between parents and offspring or among siblings. Do you agree or disagree with the statement now? What evidence supports your ideas about the statement? Make sure you include what evidence uh, supports your ideas about the statement. Remember, that's almost always the most important thing. Hey, lastly, family homework. I'm glad it doesn't say optional because then none of you would do it. Um, but yes, the family homework experience, and nothing's ever optional, right? Um, you are going to, well, let's, let's read some of this right here. That says optional. It does say optional. Work with a member of your household to list the traits of the people in your household and other people you know. Hey, Mr. Wigan, uh, I'm home alone. I don't know what to do. Okay. Email somebody. Uh, call somebody on the, on, on the phone. You know, people still do that these days. You may work with more than one member of your household. You might need to explain a little about traits and variation in order for the member of your household to be able to work with you. What are we actually supposed to do here? Make a list of the people in your household and their traits. Okay. Uh, you can also add other people like friends, neighbors, or other family members who do not live with you. Consider traits such as hair color and eye color. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Think, think of traits. What are some different traits that you have? Uh, you and members of your household or people that you know. Okay. Hey, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and let you go because that was, that took a while. And uh, nice job hanging in there. Hey, first lesson. Yeah. Takes a little bit longer.